conference is in 24 to 48 hours, depending on when this video goes live. What I wanted to do is do a very quick recap of last year's conference. And then I realized something really interesting. Since the last conference, we've actually had what I would call other presentations that actually fill the gap in between last conference and this conference. So looking back at last conference is a bit of a funny thing because actually we've heard a lot more from Tableau since then. But what I think is worthwhile doing is just reflecting on what we saw. What are the features they said they were going to bring this year? Did they actually ship them? What did we see in devs and stage and did they ship those features? That's what I think is valuable here today. But it's also a really good way of just rationalizing the context of the keynote itself and how they structure it. I'm going to do that with these glasses. I don't don't actually need glasses but these are meta ray bands i'm going to be wearing them throughout conference so i want to get you used to them as well so you, you get used to me wearing glasses because i think i'm still getting used to it but they're actually really good they record what's known as a, a pov a point of view a perspective using the camera which is on this side and then the lights on this side so once they're on and switched on i can sort of hit this button here they start recording i'm essentially filling time because i'm waiting for them to come on but now that they're on when i press and hold this button they start recording you see the light and this is what's going on. So I'm going to record a POV of this for the first few minutes, put it on the bottom left so you can see what it's like. Um, here are my notes from the summary. So this is actually my notes from the summary of the summary, <laughs> if that makes sense. I put it through an AI um, tool to kind of just give me this bullet point list very, very quickly based off my transcript. Um, great use for AI, works every single time. But anyway, um, we had the introduction and welcome from Ryan. We had those, you know, classic Salesforce setting. That's all good. Um, we had a bit of a call out to the Tableau community. Um, we had a call out some of the visualizations as well, which was really, really nice. Um, we had some announcements around local file saving for Tableau Public. I think this was announced at the conference itself. So it actually means that you can essentially have um, Tableau Public saved to your desktop rather than having to save to Tableau Public, which essentially means this is the free version of Tableau. Um, only restriction is you can't write to databases or read from databases. So um, a couple of other restrictions, but those are the main ones. Anyway. We then had the classic Salesforce, um, you know, alignment to company values and growth. Um, that's pretty standard for actually all Salesforce uh, presentations. They always come back to those values. I think it makes sense to do that if you're a company that's really, you know, grounding yourself on values. And then we had um, the four waves of analytics. And this was more just the narrative around how things have changed over the years, the different sort of contexts from those specific changes. And so they set out the structure of the keynote by essentially saying, hey, we're going to touch on innovation that we've delivered so far in these first three waves we're then going to show you the vision for the fourth wave then we're going to end on devs on stage so that's how they set this up so the first section was the innovation showcase we had tableau pulse take up a lot of the time because back then that was a new thing then they had a bit of time on einstein copilot for tableau ai system blah 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 that's now called tableau next and tableau agent so einstein copilot as a brand is pretty much gone since last year uh, we then had this slide with 140 new features if i actually just double click this and we uh, sort of um, let's make this larger so we can see this um, if we go through this list it's fair to say that all but one of these has shipped so I think the only one that hasn't shipped is composable data sources uh, but I think everything else has shipped resource monitoring improvements I don't know enough about that detail to be able to say yes or no but I think that has actually shipped it's just maybe not shipped um, you know in the, in the limelight because it's not a it's not a sexy feature it's a it's a server feature so it wouldn't have um, gotten a lot of attention and a tableau cloud doesn't really need resource monitoring because essentially it's it's managed by Tableau, so you wouldn't need it. So it would, it would be a server feature in 25.1. I'm not entirely sure it has shipped though. So everything else has pretty much shipped, which is good to see. Composable data sources, I think what might just be going on here is that it, it's essentially just, um, you know, it just missed a ship point by maybe a release or two. So we might see it in 25.2. But nonetheless, whenever we see it, that's going to be good. So um, Let's go through, we talked a bit about Tableau Cloud on Hyperforce. Hyperforce is just a technology in the Salesforce ecosystem that allows them to run a lot of different tools on their platform. So think of it as um, the underpinnings of how they run Salesforce, okay? Then we had a couple of live demos. We had Tableau Cloud Manager, Einstein Copilot for data analysis and visualizations, now called Tableau Agent. We had Tableau Pulse for real-time metrics and insights, a bit of a demo there. And then we had Viz extensions with the Sankey chart as well on stage, really, really cool. So um, having done that, we went 
back to the vision piece the vision piece being hey look these are the four challenges we see so just very very quickly uh, challenge number one data landscape is largely fragmented number two users don't trust the data uh, insights are overlooked or ignored and you can't reuse what you build so they said look these are the four problems and they spend a bit of time going through how they're going to solve each of those and they essentially showed us tableau next in response to each of those so at a high level tableau next the answer to these specific uh, questions and i actually you know no one would disagree with these problems I, I, I think everyone thinks if an analytic solution solves these problems in a good way that's 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 going to be fine what i realize now in reflection is we didn't pay too much attention to how they were going to do this we kind of just assumed that they were going to use the tableau ip but it turns out a lot of this was going to be underpinned by data cloud and tableau semantics a completely different architecture that frankly is new to the tableau community but it's not new to salesforce the other thing is that the tableau brand has now become more synonymous across salesforce so when you hear tableau it doesn't necessarily mean the tableau you and i know today it can mean capabilities uh, in salesforce that are related to analytics that is now the new way to think of tableau the brand rather than tableau the product okay so let's go ahead and close this um we went through the different uh, sort of demos and then we hit devs on stage we had data data cockpit i'm not sure this is shipped but i think the data source behind this is shipped so the cockpit was pitched as a dashboard but I'm not sure that was actually sort of clearly delivered as such. I think it was actually the data sources behind it that actually made that more of a reality. So again, I'm not 100% sure on the on the cockpit. Einstein Copilot for Prep. We saw a demo where um, Tableau agent inside of Prep was able to basically you know do step by step analysis of what you needed to do. That has not come to pass yet, and neither has sentiment analysis in Prep. So really curious where those are. Um, there has been a little bit of quiet on 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 the Prep front. I'll just I'll just take this moment here and just say. Tableau Prep is my favorite tool in the Tableau ecosystem, bar none. The, the features and the interface and the UX in that product are next level. They are just, they just knock out anything in the Tableau desktop ecosystem by a country mile. And the team that built Tableau Prep, the team that works on Tableau Prep, like just you know, five-star generals in terms of what they build and the UX and the way they ship that stuff. Like if I could, I would make Tableau Prep the heart of the Tableau ecosystem. I'd shove it into the desktop connect window, get rid of the connect window, and just make it the modeling capability of Tableau. Anyway, little eulogy done. Uh, let's carry on with this. Um, composable data sources. We saw a demo of this. Uh, that's how we know it hasn't shipped because we haven't seen that feature yet. Viz extension has shipped. Spatial parameters has shipped. Accessibility improvements have shipped, and I think there's more to come. New fonts have shipped. Custom style themes are oh, there's AI. To, uh, you know doing a typo there that's the only one i've seen so far custom style themes easy application of consistent visual themes that has shipped um just shipped by the way 25 one attribute based membership that has shipped i think it was one of the first things to ship in 24 two user attribute functions has shipped uh, enhancements to this have shipped for some time visql data service has shipped community built solutions um and th this was actually a demo so this community built solutions were actually a demo built by other partners showing what they could do so these were kind of all built built and designed so we've had super tables on the channel we've had um you know uh, tristan on the channel not to talk about figma to tableau but to talk about viz extensions but we briefly touched on figma to tableau in one of those discussions we kind of did like three separate videos um power kpis i should get the guys from infotopics to come in and talk about power kpis a bit more then you have uh, tableau and app and on apple silicon that's also shipped i use apple silicon like this is the best experience of tableau so tableau prep on apple silicon chef's kiss the smoothest butteriest experience of tableau anywhere even better than the browser probably because it's the same technology but genuinely gently apple silicon uh, tableau love it and that was pretty much the conference obviously it's coming back to san diego that was announced last year then we had iron viz day to night out and all of that stuff being sort of suggested so that is a rundown did not take five minutes we did 10 minutes there but that was a rundown of what was announced last year um i think it's super interesting like 50 to 60 percent of the stuff um we shouldn't see again because you know we've already seen most of it and even since conference we've also seen uh tableau cover pretty much a lot of the gaps that we've needed to fill since then based off what we saw at conference so what i'm hoping for this year is a little bit of a push into the next year and actually seeing hard dates to some of these visions you know hard dates to some of this uh, uh announcements and also maybe paths and uh, you know additions and uh, capabilities to allow people in the tableau core ecosystem to try some of the new stuff 
in the Tableau Next ecosystem. They're very much two ecosystems. They don't seem to be uh, built off the same architecture, but there is very clearly a path where Data Cloud is something that someone who uses Tableau Cloud can use. And there's also very clear an ecosystem where you can connect to your data sources in Tableau Semantics, which is over in Data Cloud, um, very easy in Tableau Desktop. So there is overlap between the two. It just it just isn't as obvious and intuitive, and I think conference needs to really spell that out. That to me is the biggest thing missing. What on earth do I have to do with my data sources to try out these features? Right, that's it. Uh, I'm gonna cut my video short here. <laughs> this is all I've got time for. It's actually the last video I'm recording before I pack up my desk and we go to conference. Um, I'm trying to try and go to conference with one bag as well as my camera and everything else. I think packing light is, is such a such a useful thing. It just makes it very easy to be portable. So um, I'm gonna try and do that. We're only there for five days. So yeah, if you see me uh, with a bag, that's probably the bag I travel to America with. <laughs> um, so yeah, come find me, come say hi. Uh, I can't wait to meet all of you. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.